Okay, so we've been talking about adding subtract and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Unlike meaning that the denominators are not the same. The first part, they gave us a picture to represent a fraction, and we have to figure out the fraction that goes with the picture. So when we look at the circle and it's completely shaded in, that would represent one whole because both pieces are shaded, where the other side only one half is shaded. So that picture together would represent one and one half. Our plus sign tells us that they're going to want us to add these two together. Our second picture, again, we see one whole shaded, representing a whole. And our next picture is one shaded out of four total. So together that would be one and one fourth. So I'm going to bring this over and write it over here. Some of you like to have your numbers side by side. Some need them written one on top of another. The first thing that we need to remember is when we're looking at fractions, we are looking at the denominator. We are looking for the denominators to be the same. You can see that we have a 2 and a 4, and those are not the same. So we have to make sure that we get them to the same number. If I look at one half, many of you like to use your e-charts or your EFTs to find equivalent fractions. Well, right away I see that two-fourths and one-fourth share the same denominator. So I can rewrite one half as two-fourths. It's the same thing. It's equivalent. So I'm just going to move my four over. We said that we were adding, so now because our denominator is identical, we can look at our top number and just add them as whole numbers. 2 plus 1 is 3. Denominator always stays the same when we're adding or subtracting, but don't forget about your whole number over here. 1 plus 1 is 2, and we could see with our picture we have two whole, and if we would have turned this into fourths, we would have had one, two, three, fourths. Okay, the second picture, we're going to look the same, at the same thing. We've got a picture totally shaded in, which is one whole. We have another picture shaded in, which is another whole. And we have a fraction of three fourths. This time they're wanting us to subtract. There's another picture completely shaded in, which is one whole. And this one is one out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. So this fraction together would be two and three fourths minus one and one eighth. Okay, so if you like them written, two and three-fourths minus one and one-eighth. Okay, if you notice the denominators are not the same, I need to change them. So three-fourths, I could do an E chart or an EFT. I'm going to do that up here. Three-fourths, six-eighths. Well, right away you should notice six-eighths and one-eighths are the same denominator. So my 3 fourths I can make into a 6 eighths minus my 1 eighths I get 5 eighths. 2 minus 1 is 1 and 5 eighths. So you could see that from your picture up here because if I turn these into eighths and I am taking away one whole, this would be six eighths, and I'm taking away one, which would make it one and five eighths. So you can use your pictures to help when they give you pictures. Okay, so when they don't give you pictures, they look like this. They're going to give you two fractions that you need to look at to determine how are you going to add or subtract. This one is addition. I can tell because of the addition sign. 
But look at my denominators. They are unlike or they are not the same. We need to make them the same. So I can do an EFT for one fourth. And I can make an EFT for two thirds. Right away I'm looking, do I have anything the same? No. Four six common? No. Six ninths, do I have a common denominator? No. So I'm going to keep going. Eight twelfths, twelve, yes, I have a common. Both of these are twelve. So instead of writing one fourth, I can say one fourth is equivalent to three twelfths. Don't forget my plus sign. Two thirds is equivalent to eight twelfths, but the difference is the denominators are the same. Now I can add them. Three plus eight is eleven. Denominator stays the same. My answer is eleven twelfths. Now notice on this one I didn't stack them, I put them side by side. That is your choice. If you like them side by side, you can do that. If you like them stacked, that is a preference that's up to you, however you read them better. Okay, so let's look at four. Again, we have two-fifths. This time we are subtracting one-tenth. Well, look at your denominators. Are they the same? No. So what do we do to find the same denominator? You can do an EFT for two-fifths. Right away I find I have a common so I'm going to rewrite two-fifths as four-tenths minus, well I didn't have to do anything to my one-tenth because it's already in a tenth. Four minus one is three. Denominator stays the same. Three-tenths is my answer. Okay, let's look at five. Why don't you try this one on your own? Pause the video, come back and check with me when you're finished. Okay, so you should have tried this one on your own. We have five sixths and one fourth. This is an addition problem. And I'm looking at the six and the four. And what do I notice? They are not the same, but I need them to be the same. So I can use an EFT to find a common denominator. Okay, and then I'm going to do one four, one fourth. I'm going to check right away. Do I have a common? No. Two eighths, common? No. Three twelfths? Oh, yes, I see a common. Our twelves are common, so I'm going to look at rewriting my fractions with a common denominator. So five, six, and ten twelfths are the same, they're equivalent, but now I have a common denominator. One fourth I'm going to rewrite as three twelfths. It's equivalent, but it has now a common denominator with the other one. Remember this is an addition problem, so I can just add thirteen twelfths. Oh, but that answer is an improper fraction. So I need to make it a mixed number. How do I do that? Divide up. I'm going to divide my denominator into my numerator. 12 goes into 13 one time. 1 times 12 is 12. 3 minus 2 is 1. Remainder 1. How I pull those numbers out is my whole number 1. My remainder of 1 is my numerator. 12 is my denominator. So my answer is 1 and 1 twelfth. Okay, let's try another one. Let's get down to 9 so we have some more room. Go ahead and do number 9 on your own. Pause the video, then come back and check with me. Okay, so number 9 is an addition problem. I look again at my numerators. They are not the same but I know that 10 and 5 share, they have a 10 in common. 
Well, how do I get my 5 to a 10? I can multiply times 2, but whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, and that gives me 8 tenths. So I can rewrite this as 3 tenths plus 8 tenths. Now, if you struggle with math facts and you could not see that, you could have easily done your e-chart or your EFT because you would, I'm sorry, I did that wrong, my 8 tenths, the very next fraction would have been in common with your 3 tenths. Add them up, 3 plus 8 is 11, denominator stays the same. We have the same problem we did just a minute ago. We have an improper fraction. I need to make that a proper fraction, so I'm going to divide up 10 divided by, I'm sorry, 10 divided into 11, it goes in once, remainder 1, so we write that as 1 and 1 tenth is my answer. Okay, so let's look at the problem with the recipe at the bottom. Let me zoom out just a little bit so that you are able to see the recipe. that we're talking about. So a lot of mistakes were made on this one where it said how much sugar is needed in the recipe. Well we went over to our side, well we've got brown sugar and regular sugar. A lot of you just grabbed the regular sugar and answered the question. But this needs to be three-fourths representing brown sugar if we're finding how much is needed, we're adding one half. Same issue as above. We need to look at this problem and look at the denominators. I noticed a four and a three, but a four and a three are not the same. So if I know my math facts, I know that two times two is four, and whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So I know that one half is the same as two fourths. So I can rewrite 3 fourths plus 2 fourths. Now my denominators are the same. I'm going to add them and I have 5 fourths. Same problem as we just talked about. We have an improper so we're going to pull that improper out and it's the same as 1 and 1 fourth. Number 13 says, how much more flour is needed than brown sugar? Okay, so now I'm going to look at the flour and the brown sugar. How much more tells us that we are subtracting? Flour is one-third, brown sugar is three-fourths. Van is also our keyword of subtracting. So I know that I'm going to have to subtract these two numbers. I'm actually going to use a different piece of paper so that we have, I have room to show you because they didn't give us a whole lot of room. So we said two and a third is our flour and three fourths is our brown sugar. And we are subtracting. Okay, so the first thing I look at still is my denominators. Are they the same? No. So I need to get a common denominator. One third is the same as two sixths, which is the same as three ninths, which is the same as four twelfths. Okay, for three fourths, make sure I do not have a common yet, no. Six eighths, no common. 9 twelfths, I see a common. There's that 12 again. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite. This is going to equal 4 twelfths. This would equal 9 twelfths. So if you had seen it ahead of time and saw that you needed to multiply those two by 3, those two by 4, you would have gotten the same fractions to subtract. Now what I notice is 4 twelfths, I can't take 9 from 4, but I can borrow, I'm going to give 1 to my other side, 
which I'm going to have in the form of 12 twelfths, which will make this 16 twelfths. 16 twelfths minus 9 twelfths would be 7 twelfths. Bring down your whole number. Your answer is 1 and 7 twelfths. Another way to do that problem, Ms. Rosenauer and I were just talking about this. Let me show you the same problem. And three fourths. And we're subtracting. It is to start off with all improper. Remember with improper, we're going to multiply and add. So three times two is six plus one is seven. Denominator stays the same. Bring your three fourths over. We could we could have done our denominator the same first or second. So I need to get the same denominator. And remember from our last one, we knew that this was 12. So I'm going to multiply times 3 to get my 12. And times 4 to get my 12 on this one. Now I can subtract 28 minus 9. Nineteen twelfths, well that's improper, so we're going to have to make it into a mixed divide. Did we get the same answer? One and seven twelfths that way. One and seven twelfths that way. Same answer. This one's probably a heck of a lot easier, so use whichever one works for you. So let's try 14, pause the video, try it on your own, then come back and check. Okay, so for 14, they're asking for the total amount. Okay, so I'm going to use my extra paper down here. Um, total amount tells us that we are adding. They asked for brown sugar, sugar, flour. Brown sugar was 3 fourths of a cup, sugar was 1 half of a cup, flour was 2 and 1 third of a cup. So I'm going to add them up. 3 fourths, 1 half, 2 and a third. Move this up so you can see it. Okay, we are adding, so we're going to find the total. Common denominator, 4, 2, and 3. They all share, again, a 12. If you need to do an EFT for each of them to see that, that's fine. Whatever works. The problem with EFTs that you're going to find is some of them just take too darn long and you're wasting your time. So if you're not comfortable with math facts, get your math facts practiced so that you have them. So this would be 9 twelfths, 6 twelfths, those of you who are my multi mathematicians who can multiply really easily. Okay, then we're going to add them all up. 9 plus 6 is 15, plus 4 is 19 twelfths. Bring down your 2 whole. This is improper. Get it out of the improper. We have 1 and 7 twelfths, which we need to add, so this would be 3 and 1 twelfth. So we could have found an improper first, got the same answer.